Did you know the average person throws away enough trash in just a few months to fill an entire room? And here's the shocking part. A simple glass bottle, the kind you finish in five minutes, can sit in a landfill for over a million years without ever breaking down. But here's the twist. Glass isn't the villain people think it is. In fact, it's one of the most sustainable materials we've ever created. Because unlike plastic or paper, it can be recycled endlessly without losing strength or clarity. So how does a pile of shattered glass bottles get transformed into something shiny and brand new again? Let's step inside one of the world's biggest glass recycling plants and follow the incredible rebirth of a material that truly never dies. The recycling journey starts with something simple. People finishing their drinks and tossing away empty bottles. The problem is, most of the time, those bottles get mixed in with food scraps, plastics, or general garbage. That means before a single bottle can be reused, someone has to untangle the mess, and that's both expensive and time-consuming. But some countries have found a brilliant solution. Instead of leaving bottles buried in household trash, they've designed systems that make recycling automatic and rewarding. Across much of Europe, you'll find sleek machines tucked inside grocery stores and even on busy street corners. They look a bit like futuristic vending machines, but instead of buying a snack, you feed them your empty bottle. The machine scans it, sorts it instantly, and then spits out a small refund, usually 10 to 20 cents per bottle. That small incentive changes everything. Suddenly, an empty beer bottle isn't just waste, it's worth real money. And on the other side, factories get a steady supply of glass that's already cleaner, more consistent, and easier to process. This simple loop keeps millions of bottles out of landfills every single day. It's a smart example of how design and psychology work hand in hand to turn recycling from a chore into an opportunity. Now you might be wondering, does the US have something similar? A few states do operate bottle deposit programs, but nothing close to the level of convenience seen in Europe. And that gap means tons of glass here still ends up being wasted. Trucks specially designed for glass recycling arrive at supermarkets and city collection points. Workers use forklifts to load giant bins, each one holding thousands of empty bottles. A single truck can carry up to 30,000 bottles in a single trip. Imagine that, one vehicle loaded with the leftovers of entire neighborhoods. When the trucks reach the recycling facility, the real show begins. The drivers back into a massive unloading bay, and the moment those bins are tipped, a wave of bottles comes crashing down. In just minutes, the ground is covered with mountains of glass sparkling under the lights. Greens, browns, and clear bottles stack together in chaotic heaps. To the untrained eye, it might look like a junkyard of broken pieces. But to the plant operators, it's not garbage, it's gold. Those colorful piles are the raw material that will be reborn into something new. It's the first step of a cycle that can repeat endlessly, generation after generation, and this is where the real transformation begins, taking that mountain of jagged shards and turning it back into a May glass recycling processing. Once the trucks unload their cargo, the mountains of glass are more than just a glittering pile. They're the foundation of the entire recycling process. But before a single new bottle can be made, all that glass has to be cleaned, crushed, and sorted with precision. The work begins with heavy machinery. Towering loaders roll up to the heaps, scooping massive buckets of bottles and dumping them into the plant's feed system. The moment the shards hit the steel hopper, you hear the unmistakable roar of glass tumbling down into the conveyor line. From here on, everything happens with industrial speed and accuracy. Along the conveyor belt, workers stand alert, eyes scanning for anything that doesn't belong. With quick hands, they pull out non-glass items piece by piece. Bottle caps, most of these are made from steel, and if they slip through, they'll cause chaos in the melting process. Luckily, the solution is elegant, a high-powered magnetic separator. As the glass flows beneath it, the magnets instantly grab onto the metal caps, yanking them out of the stream. Just like that, the mix is about 80% clean. From shards to cull it now comes one of the most important transformations. The larger pieces of glass are too bulky to melt efficiently, so they're sent into a hammer mill an enormous machine armed with spinning hammers that pulverize the shards into much smaller fragments. The sound is deafening, a rhythmic metallic pounding 
as glass is smashed over and over until it resembles tiny crystals. This finely ground product is called Cullet. It looks almost like artificial sand, sparkling as it moves along the line. That efficiency is what makes glass such a sustainable superstar. Of course, the Cullet isn't ready yet. Even tiny label scraps or bits of ceramic could ruin the final product, so the fragments go through another cleaning step. A powerful stream of air blasts across the moving glass, stripping away paper and dust. The cullet emerges looking noticeably cleaner, but the plant isn't done. Now we reach the most high-tech part of the entire process, optical sorting. Imagine standing in front of a waterfall of glittering glass with thousands of tiny pieces cascading down at lightning speed. While to us it looks chaotic, the recycling system sees it with laser-like precision. As the cullet falls, laser sensors scan each fragment individually, analyzing color and composition in real time. The system is so fast that it can process tens of thousands of pieces every single minute. When a piece of green or brown glass is spotted in a stream of clear fragments, or when a stray ceramic shard sneaks in, a perfectly timed puff of air shoots it into a separate bin. This process is unbelievably accurate because even a slight mismatch in color can ruin a batch of recycled glass. What started as a chaotic mess of dirty bottles has been transformed into one of the purest and most valuable raw materials on the planet. And now with the glass clean, sorted, and perfectly prepared, it's ready to take on fire itself. The furnace where broken shards will melt into liquid and be reborn as something brand new. With the cullet cleaned, sorted, and sparkling like artificial sand, the next chapter of its journey begins. But it can't just go into the furnace alone. It needs a carefully designed recipe. Factories start by blending the cullet with raw materials. The backbone is pure silica sand, the mineral that gives glass its clarity and strength. Limestone is added to stabilize the mixture and improve durability. Depending on what type of glass is being made, small amounts of other ingredients, like alumina, dolomite, or metal oxides, might be introduced to fine-tune the final product's properties or even adjust its color. But here's the key. Cullet can make up anywhere from 20% to 70% of the batch. The higher the cullet content, the faster the melting process and the lower the energy demand. In fact, just adding 10% more cullet can cut energy use by about 3% and reduce carbon emissions significantly. Turning sand into liquid fire. Once blended, the batch is fed into a gigantic gas-fired furnace where temperatures soar to around 1,250 degrees Celsius, hotter than the surface of flowing volcanic lava. Inside this fiery chamber, the mixture slowly melts, fusing into a glowing orange liquid. Technicians monitor the process carefully. The molten glass must reach the perfect viscosity, thick enough to hold its shape, but fluid enough to be molded. By the time it's ready, the furnace glows with a blinding brilliance a pool of molten glass waiting to be shaped. Designing the mold glass doesn't take shape on its own. To transform molten liquid into usable bottles, factories rely on precision engineered molds. Engineers use advanced CAD software to design them, measuring every curve and line down to fractions of a millimeter. These molds, typically made from cast iron or alloy steel, must withstand punishing temperatures day after day. Once complete, the molds are installed into what's known as a double-blow production line. Another jet of air inflates the glass like a balloon, pressing it tightly against every contour of the mold's walls. In seconds, a recognizable bottle shape emerges, still radiating with heat, but now solid enough to hold its form. Behind the scenes, this process is timed with incredible precision. Every valve, every puff of air, every transfer happens in perfect synchronization, down to thousands of a second. That's why modern production lines can churn out hundreds of thousands of bottles a day, each one virtually identical to the next. Freshly formed bottles leave the molds glowing red, their surfaces shimmering like molten metal. Robotic arms gently lift them onto a conveyor belt, which guides them into an annealing tunnel a long chamber where the temperature gradually cools. This slow, controlled cooling prevents internal stress from cracking the glass. Depending on the size and thickness of the bottles, the process can take several minutes to nearly an hour. Once cooled, the bottles face rigorous inspection. High-speed cameras and optical sensors scan each one for cracks, bubbles, scratches, or tiny warps. 
any defect is immediately flagged and removed from the line. The mouths of the bottles undergo an especially close check because even the slightest chip or misalignment would prevent proper sealing. Only bottles that pass these tests move forward, preparing for distribution. Finally, robotic systems take over again for palletizing. Bottles are stacked in neat layers with protective sheets placed between rows. Automated wrapping machines secure the stacks tightly in film and label them with batch codes for tracking. From there, the pallets head into storage, waiting to be shipped to beverage companies and manufacturers around the world. But before they reach consumers, some bottles have one more step, being filled on the bottling line of the world's most famous brands. The Coca-Cola bottling line glass bottles may be beautiful on their own, but their real purpose is to hold something inside. And few drinks are more iconic in glass than Coca-Cola. For decades, Coke's glass bottle has been a symbol recognized around the world, crisp, cold, and instantly nostalgic. But before those bottles ever reach the shelves, they go through a bottling process that's as precise and fascinating as the recycling journey itself. The line begins with cleaning. Even though the bottles are fresh from the factory, they can still carry dust or microscopic particles from storage. To make sure every bottle is flawless, high-pressure jets of hot water and steam blast through the interiors, scrubbing them clean. From here, the bottles glide down a conveyor belt to the filling station. Automated nozzles lower into position, and in perfect synchronization, each bottle is filled with exactly the right amount of Coca-Cola. The accuracy is astonishing. Every single bottle is filled down to the milliliter. At the same time, carbon dioxide is injected to lock in that signature fizz. As the filled bottles move forward, crown caps, those classic ridged metal lids, are pressed on with precision machinery. Each cap is sealed airtight to keep the carbonation trapped inside. Sophisticated sensors double-check the tightness of every seal, ensuring that not a single bottle leaks a bubble before it leaves the plant. But the quality control doesn't stop there. The line is equipped with high-speed cameras that inspect every bottle in real time. They're looking for cracks, chips, overfilled levels, or crooked labels. If a bottle doesn't meet the standard, it's instantly diverted off the belt. The rest continue their journey, perfectly lined up like soldiers on parade. The final step is packaging. The bottles are grouped where upon into cartons or crates, loaded onto pallets, and wrapped securely for transport. From here, they're stored in chilled warehouses, ready to be shipped. Within days, those same bottles are sitting in fridges at gas stations, stacked in supermarket aisles, or served in restaurants and cafes around the world. A glass bottle that was once a pile of broken shards is now back in circulation, carrying one of the most famous drinks on the planet, the endless cycle of glass. And just like that, the journey comes full circle. A bottle that once seemed like waste has been reborn into something pure, strong, and valuable. The beauty of glass lies in this endless cycle. Unlike plastic, which weakens each time it's recycled, or paper, which eventually breaks down, glass never loses its quality. It can be recycled infinitely, going from bottle to shard to cull it and back to bottle again, forever. This process doesn't just save resources, it saves energy too. Every ton of glass recycled prevents over a ton of raw materials from being mined and reduces carbon emissions significantly. Multiply that by the billions of bottles recycled worldwide, and you start to see just how powerful this cycle is. But here's the catch. Recycling only works if we participate. That means making the simple choice to return bottles instead of tossing them away. It means supporting systems that make recycling convenient and rewarding. And it means recognizing that something as ordinary as a soda bottle can hold extraordinary potential. The next time you finish a drink, take a second look at that glass bottle in your hand. It's not trash. It's not something to forget about. It's a material with history, resilience, and an infinite future. From the roar of the recycling plant to the glowing heat of the furnace, from precision molds to high-speed bottling lines, every stage of its journey is a reminder of just how advanced and how sustainable human technology can be. So the question is, will you let that bottle sit in a landfill for a million years, or will you send it back on its journey of rebirth? The choice is yours. If you enjoyed this deep dive into the world of glass recycling, let us know in the comments. And don't forget to like, share, 
and subscribe so you never miss more fascinating industrial journeys.